Jasper and Scruff, The Treasure Hunt, part two. Here is another story of our favorite, my favorite, Jasper and Scruff. Smart kitty, messy puppy, here comes trouble by Nicola Colton. Let's see what Jasper and Scruff get up to this time in the treasure hunt. Jasper was the type of cat who liked the finer things in life, fancy meals, bow ties, and expensive art. His best friend Scruff liked the simpler things, chasing his ball, sniffing out adventures, and eating anything that was salted caramel flavor. Jasper was also the type of cat who had always dreamed of running a bookstore, and now he did with the help of Scruff. There's Scruff climbing the ladder. One morning, Jasper was counting the money in the register as they waited for the first customers of the day. Scruff, I think we've sold even more books than last week, he purred contently. Scruff? Wee! cried Scruff as he slid past on a rolling ladder, knocking some books to the floor. Jasper sighed as he went to pick them up. He had asked Scruff to dust the shelves, but he didn't mean like that. Ding-a-ling, a bell rang as the door swung open. Be with you in a minute, Jasper called. A hooded figure tiptoed across the floor and placed a book-shaped package lightly on the counter. Ding-a-ling, the bell rang again as the figure left. Jasper turned around. Scruff, he said, looking down at his package. Did you see who left this? Wee! Scruff zoomed past again. There's the package, it says to Jasper, to Jasper and Scruff. Jasper carefully tore open the paper to reveal a leather bound book. Black whiskers, he said, tracing his paw over the fancy lettering on the cover. Scruff leaped down from the ladder and skidded across the counter. The pirate, he panted. Ah, oh, you're getting drool on my bow tie, groaned Jasper, dabbing it with his hanky. Well, what does it say, asked Scruff. Jasper opened the book and he began to read. Black Whiskers was the captain of the Silver Sardine. A skilled treasure hunter, she discovered riches all over the world. It was said that she used up most of her nine lives battling storms and fighting sea monsters. She set out on her last voyage to Dogtooth Island in search of the legendary Golden Bone, but she never returned. Cool. Whoa, said Scruff, his tail wagging. I heard that her first mate stole the Golden Bone. As Jasper turned a page, a yellowing sheet of paper floated to the ground. Look, yapped Scruff, a treasure map. The golden bone, whispered Jasper. His eyes became as large as saucers of cream as he imagined adding it to his art collection. Cool. But as Jasper picked up the map, Scruff grabbed the other end between his teeth. Grrr, growled the playful puppy. Tug of war was one of his favorite games. Scruff let go, you're going to tear it, said Jasper. Rip. Jasper stumbled backward into a display of books. Ow, he yelped. Ugh, spluttered, spluttered Scruff, coughing up a piece of map. Uh-oh. Jasper smoothed out the crumpled map on the counter, and then he picked up the soggy scrap with his hanky and he put it in its place. It looks like a map of our town, said Jasper, twiddling his whiskers thoughtfully. But how could the golden bone have ended up here? Jasper grabbed his magnifying glass to take a closer look. Ah, there's something written beside Mrs. Caw's clock shop, he said. It could be a clue. On the hour, you will hear my song, so hurry up now and move along. 
It's almost 10 o'clock now, said Scruff. Let's go. What about the store? asked Jasper. Oh, come on. It will be fun, said Scruff. I'll make a sign and let everyone know that we will be back soon. Hmm, I guess, said Jasper. Yay, an adventure. I love adventures, he said, said Scruff as he ducked down behind the counter. A few minutes later, he reappeared waving a sign and a large hat. Um, Scruff, what is that? It's my pirate hat. Do you like it? I even managed to I even managed to tuck my treasure hunting kit inside. It's certainly um interesting, said Jasper. As Scruff hung his sign on the door, Jasper looked for the key to lock up the store, but it wasn't in its usual spot. There the sign says, treasure hunt, be back soon. Scruff, did you move the key, he asked. Scruff shook his head. Oh well, said Jasper, plucking a spare key from under a plant pot. There was no time to lose. The pair took a shortcut through the park as they got closer to Mrs. Caw's shop. They could hear music. Her shop must be back here. Let's see the music. Morning, Mrs. Caw, said Scruff, bounding inside. shooby dooby doo you are my weekend bird, crowed Mrs. Caw as she polished a display case. Jasper snapped along to the music. Alvis Pawsley was his favorite singer. Do you have any clocks that sing on the hour? asked Scruff. Oh, hello there, said Mrs. Caw, turning down the record player. A clock with some flowers, you say? Um, no, a clock that sings on the hour, repeated Jasper. Sings? Hmm, said Mrs. Caw, resting her beak on her wing. We've got tickers and talkers and chimers and buzzers, dingers and dongers, but no singing clocks. We do have one that goes cuckoo. Jasper almost jumped out of his fur. Yes, that's the one, said Mrs. Caw, pointing up at the cuckoo clock. Look, something just fell out of the cuckoo's beak, said Scruff. You don't mind if we take that, do you? asked Jasper. Oop, this piece of paper fell out. Outside, Jasper unfolded the piece of paper. I am as salty as the sea, but sweet as cake. Eat me too fast and you'll get a headache. Mm, I know this one. Scruff licked his lips. It has to be Salty Sid's salted caramel ice cream. Really, asked Jasper, are you sure? This clue seemed a little easy. If I'm wrong, we can still have ice cream, said Scruff. All right, said Jasper, but Salty Sid's is miles away. Why don't we ask Mrs. Caw if we can borrow her tandem bike? They rode across town to Snootington on the Sea. Jasper did most of the work since Scrub's paws could barely reach the pedals. There they are in their tandem bike, their two person bike. Out of breath, Jasper stopped by, stopped by a cheerily painted boat tied to the pier beside a large wooden ice cream cone. Ahoy, me hearties, what can I get you on this fine day? asked Salty Sid, leaning out of the porthole. We'll take all of your salted caramel ice cream, please, asked Scruff. All of it? asked Salty Sid. Yes, all of it, please, said Jasper, and two spoons. The pair ate and ate and ate. Finally, as they reached the bottom of the tub, Jasper's head throbbed, his tummy ached. What if we never find the golden bone, he groaned. But Scruff wasn't listening. Buzzing from all the sugar, he zipped around in circles, chasing his ball. The ball knocked into one of the wooden cones it wobbled and then ker thunk. Uh oh, the wooden cone tipped over and the scoop of ice cream bounced away. Something was taped to the inside of the cone. Scruff picked it up with his teeth 
and dropped it into Jasper's lap. Ew, said Jasper, it's covered in drool. It's a key, said Scruff. Maybe it opens a treasure chest. And look, there's another clue, said Jasper. Do you mind if we take this, Sid? No, not at all, replied Sid. Ye have just bought a week's worth of ice cream. I'd be happy to help. Jasper read the clue. A place of curtains, lights, and magic for those who enjoy all things dramatic. Tread the boards until they squeak. You will find the treasure that you seek. Lights, curtain, drama, said Jasper. I know this one. It has to be the Velvet Theater. He even knew a way to get in from his acting days. You are right, Scruff. This is fun. Now let's get back on that bike. Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to stop right here. We are on page 41. We read 41 pages. It's four tens and one one, 41. So we will, I will be back soon to finish up Jasper and Scruff and the treasure hunt. Have a good day.